The three laws of robotics. My name is Jacob Morgan. I'm an author, speaker, and futurist, and this is where I explore the future of work in five minutes or less. Welcome to the future in five. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Future in 5. You know, we keep hearing about the future of AI, the future of robots, and this theme of digital ethics keeps coming up. And I'm a huge fan of science fiction novels. Uh, Isaac Asimov specifically wrote a bunch of wonderful books. Uh, if you haven't heard of him or checked out his books yet, I highly recommend that you do so. Uh, the Foundation series, the iRobot series, they're awesome. Uh, if you want to get a glimpse of what the future might look like, uh, those books will definitely give you a good kind of picture around that. I promise you won't be able to put them down. Uh, but in his books, he developed this concept of the three laws of robotics, which I thought were very interesting and fascinating and very applicable uh, to the world that we uh, appear to be moving towards. And so I wanted to read you what those three laws of robotics actually are. Uh, I couldn't memorize them just because like the exact phrasing and, and, and way that he writes them are, uh, are not that easy to memorize and kind of recite. So these are the three laws of robotics that Isaac Asimov created in a world where we have smart AI and robots and humans living and working with those types of robots and AI. So the first law. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Simple enough, right? Uh, the second law, a robot must obey the orders given, given it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. In other words, uh, the robot has to do what it's told unless for some reason what it's being told to do conflicts with the first law, which is harm a human being or do something or not do something that allows a human being to get hurt. Uh, the third law is a robot must, prote must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. And for a while, these were the three laws of robotics that he created. And later on, he created a, a fourth law, uh, which is known as the, the zeroth law, which is um, uh, basically, he called it that to uh, mean that it has to precede all the other th three laws that he created. So the zeroth law of robotics is a robot may not harm humanity or by inaction allow humanity to come to harm. So that's it. Uh, in the world that he created in his books, uh, robots and AI, the reason why they didn't take over the world and just kill and destroy everybody is because of these laws that they followed. Uh, however, if you read the books, you'll see that some interesting things happen. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but check out the books, look at the iRobot series, and you'll see how these four laws are actually put into play uh, and how that might lead to something that we are perhaps moving towards in the next 50, 100 plus years. But I'd be really curious to hear what you think. When you hear these three laws, do you think they are enough, or these four laws, do you think they're enough to keep AI or robots from causing havoc and destroying the human race, assuming that that might potentially happen? Curious to hear what you think. Will these laws be able to save the world? Or will they allow robots and humans uh, and AI, AI uh, to coexist in a, in a peaceful world? Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Curious to hear your thoughts on this. And also, have you read his books? Uh, I'm also really curious if you've read those. And if you have other sci-fi books that you recommend that I check out uh, as kind of a fellow sci-fi nerd, let me know. I'm always looking for awesome sci-fi books out there. Uh, that's, for, that's it for me on this week's episode of The Future in Five. If you want to subscribe, uh, please do so. Uh, you can get access to the newsletter by visiting thefutureorganization.com. And of course, you can find me on Twitter, at Jacob M. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Future in 5. If you are interested in the future of work, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you will get access to all of the latest videos that I do to help future-proof your career and your organization. How can you say no to free unlimited education? Make sure to subscribe.